Hi, welcome back. All right, the epoxy is set up, the ribs are in place, this thing is ready to skin. The skin we use is a heavy duty cotton canvas duct that we purchased at Hancock Fabrics. Comes in standard bolt widths by the yard. Uh, I buy several yards of it at a time. It's about four to five dollars a yard. It takes about a 30 inch by 30 inch piece of canvas to skin one of these geese out uh, in this particular size. What we'll do is we'll overlay the piece that we cut out over the canvas. We'll start pulling it tight uh, in the back, attaching it with a standard carpentry staple gun uh, using half inch staples. We pull it tight on the sides, working our way on one side, and then along the other side, making it tight as we go, stapling it, and then we work our creases and folds to finish out our front and our back, and uh, that's how we, we complete that out. The thing about it is, is we put the canvas on. We want to get it as tight as we can, but it doesn't have to be perfectly tight or perfectly free of, of uh, creases or, or ridges. Because after we're done and get it all trimmed out, we spray it with water. And the water causes this uh, raw canvas to shrink, and uh, then it will stay that way, provided we don't handle it in you know too rough of a manner. But the way we, we keep it tight is once we put our base coat of Rust-Oleum oil-based paint on it. The oil won't evaporate out, so it's going to stay that way. And once it is dry with that, uh, that base coat, it's ready to paint with some relatively uh, uh, good surface for detail. You can't put a lot of detail on these things. Of course, they're not designed to have a lot of detail painted onto them. But uh, the, the canvas will stay just as tight and taut as, uh, as can be. In fact, you can drum on it with your finger and it will make a drumming sound and it should stay that way for as long as the integrity of the canvas stays in place. So with that, got my canvas, we're ready to go. We have our canvas uh, put on to the, the skin. I have it all tightened down and tacked into place and now we're ready to trim off excess and put on our binding. This is how I finished out the underside of the tail. As I said before, it's almost like wrapping Christmas presents. You have to learn how to tuck things in and uh, make seams and, and uh, attach them. Uh, remember, this is the bottom of the decoy, so it's really not going to be seen, but we want to make sure that we get it all down, all tight, and then I finished it out with some binding, which will then be covered up with the binding that goes around the perimeter. On the front, we pulled all the pieces in together and then we trimmed off excess and then we made a wedge or pyramid shaped uh, piece of canvas with folded under seams and attached it to cover the front part of where we made our transition. What we're going to do at this point is we're going to take a sharp X-Acto knife because of the thin blade. And by the way, this X-Acto kit was one that started the whole decoy carving process for me back uh, when I was about 10 years old. It was given to me as a gift. I still have it. I still use a lot of the same blades because you can resharpen them. But we want to take a sharp X-Acto blade and use to trim off the excess around the perimeter. When we get to the multiple layers, uh, you may have to lift those layers up just slightly to get in to where you can actually make a cut through them. We now have the canvas completely stretched over the wire. We have the uh, edges trimmed off. We've also gone through and applied a little bit of Titebond 3 waterproof, 
waterproof wood glue to the seams. Uh, that allows the uh, canvas to have a little bit of a uh, protectant from it unraveling. It also keeps it down. We're getting ready to install now our quilt binding uh, around the edge. We'll go through a few of these nails. Sprayed it down with water and got it nice and damp. And as you can see, it's already starting to shrink. Now it's damp right now, so I'm going to take it in the house, get the hair dryer on it, dry it up quickly. That way we can move on to the next step and it'll shrink up nicely. Canvas is all dry. You can see that it's gotten very taut. We're now going to prepare the head to make sure that it's uh, ready to glue on. As you can see, I already kind of made a little channel here for it to sit against the, the spine because of the position of the head. I had to slide it a little further back. But uh, I'm going to have to add that just a little bit more because it's not quite sitting as, as uh, low as I'd like it. Also, where I brought this gusset up, i got an extra thickness of cloth in there i got to contend with. And what I've, what I've done is I've gone in and I've made pencil marks right here where that comes into the head and then what I've done is I'm going to uh, go in here and channel this out just a little bit to compensate for that extra thickness and then it's ready to glue on. I'll use the West System two-part epoxy it uh, doesn't have to have a lot of pressure on it, but what we'll do is we'll put the epoxy on there, we'll butter it up nice and good, and we'll put just a little bit of weight here on the top just to keep it pressed down. The, the epoxy does not rely upon pressure in order to gain a, a bond. It, uh, it, it will create its own bond. It will soak into the wood, so we put a little bit on each surface to let it soak in, and then we butter it again and uh, then let it uh, set up. That allows me to uh, make it sit down just a little tighter onto the head. <laughs> 